From the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, this is Space Shuttle Atlantis Launch Control. The countdown for launch of Space Shuttle Atlantis on Mission STS-84 is continuing on schedule tonight. The window for launch of Atlantis opens at about 4.07 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow and extends for only seven minutes. Work at Launch Pad 39A as well as operations here in Firing Room 3 of the Launch Control Center are continuing as planned. Just a short while ago, the external tank was filled with over 500,000 gallons of liquid propellants, and those tanking operations are now complete. No technical concerns or issues are being addressed at this time, and we anticipate an on-time liftoff of Atlantis and the seven-member crew from Kennedy Space Center in just about five hours. And apparently our crew have been seated for their meal uh, somewhat earlier than uh, previously scheduled. They are in the uh, operations and checkout building, just having left their crew quarters. Uh, they are seated for their final meal before uh, being driven out to the launch pad. Uh, they've been awake since about 6 p.m. Uh, today, and all seven of them will be on the same schedule throughout this mission. Uh, Elena Kondakova, of course, our Russian cosmonaut, flying seated next to our shuttle commander, Charlie Precourt. All the crew, again, are, are well-trained. This is our pilot, Eileen Collins, who is flying for the second time as pilot. And rounding out the crew, of course, we have other mission specialists, uh, Carlos Noriega, Ed Liu, and, of course, Michael Fole, who we saw just a few seconds ago, will be actually taken up and will remain on the Mir space station uh, for four months until Atlantis again goes back to retrieve him in September. Our mission commander, Charles Precourt, is on his third flight, having served as mission specialist of STS-55 and then as pilot of STS-71. Uh, that was the first space shuttle mission to dock with the Russian space station, and now he'll serve as commander of this, the sixth mission to dock with the space station Mir. Uh, he is a colonel in the uh, Air Force, and next to him, of course, is our uh, pilot, Eileen Collins. Edward Liu is preparing for his first mission into space. And on the other side of the room, uh, another one of our mission specialists preparing for his first flight, Carlos Noriega. Michael Fole. This is a special mission for him. He's flown three times before, but on this particular flight, of course, he will be staying on board the Mir space station. And Jean-Francois Clairvoy is preparing for his flight today. And Elena Kondakova, a Russian cosmonaut, making her first trip into space aboard the shuttle. However, she has spent nearly half a year in orbit aboard the space station Mir. Uh, 
Now this is a remarkable shot of the moon from one of our long range trackers. You can see the kind of detail that our tracking cameras have. This is a shot of uh, moon craters, of course. Again, the crew waving, uh, making their final goodbyes to employees at Kennedy Space Center. Mission Commander Charlie Precourt with pilot Eileen Collins, Jean-Francois Clairvoy, Carlos Noriega, Edward Liu, Elena Kondakova, and Michael Cole. This picture is this view is a uh, shot taken from the 195 foot level. The crew have the crew has arrived on this level and they'll be taking turns getting into the vehicle. Of course, their next step is to cross the orbiter access arm on this level that leads over to the vehicle. The seven space flyers on STS-84 reflect the multinational nature of this mission. Uh, their origins are found in six countries, the United States, Russia, England, France, Peru, and China. Again, our launch will occur at the opening of our seven minute window at 4.07 and 48 seconds. NTD launch strike two twelve. Yes, sir. I'll do a poll at this time. Up. Payload director. Payload to go. Copy that. Engineering director. Engineering is go. Say again, Rudy. Engineering is go, Jim. Do that. Safety and mission assurance. Safety and mission assurance is go, Jim. Copy that. Range weather. Roger, sir. We have no constraints to launch. Copy that. Ops manager. 
Jim, the MMT is working. No issues. You're cleared to launch. Copy that. And Atlantis, uh, everything has come together, so we're ready to go. You guys have a good flight, good mission. We'll see you back here on Saturday a week. Atlantis companies and to the whole team, to our international partners uh, around the world, we're ready to go, and we thank for all your hard work. And MTD, you're clear to launch. Copy. Yeah, yes. Start APU and hydraulic should start recording. Copy. That's right. TLTO Go ahead. Form APU pre start. That's it. Look. And control surface checks are now being conducted. And the gaseous oxygen vent hood is being slowly retracted away from the top of the external tank. Everything looks good and we're cleared for launch today. No problems are being reported from the vehicle or the crew. And Atlantis uh, copies to the whole NASA team and to our partners around the world. Spasiba, Balsha, Uvidem Siskora, Postly, Espresso, Valpariota. Merci pour tout ce que vous avez fait pour le succès de notre world. And thanks for making Atlanta such a beautiful bird. We're ready to take it over and be with our friends on there. One minute, 30 seconds. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. We have a go for main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1. We have booster ignition and liftoff of the space shuttle Atlantis, maintaining America's constant presence in space. Houston now controlling the flight of Atlantis. Uh, yeah, I wish you stay with the world program. Roger roll, Atlantis. Echoing the words of Yuri Gagarin on his launch 36 years ago, Commander Charlie Freeport puts Atlantis into the roll, heads down, wings level for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Mike Fall headed to the Mir space station. Thirty seconds into the flight, Atlantis's three liquid fuel main engines now throttling back in a three-step fashion to 67% of rated performance to dampen the stress on the shuttle's aero surfaces as it breaks through the sound barrier. Fifty-three seconds into the flight, the main engines now beginning to rev up to full throttle, 104% of rated performance. The engines, along with the three fuel cells and three auxiliary power units, all functioning normally. Fifteen seconds away from solid rocket booster separation. That will be commanded by the general purpose computers through the master events controller on board. Booster officer confirms a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance is converging on all three main engines, now gently steering Atlantis for a precise keyhole in space for main engine cutoff. Atlantis, performance is nominal.